Hi, I'm Mahesh Jaraman, acupressure therapist, health counselor, and co founder of Sepalika.com. GERD or acid reflux affects nearly 20% of all the adults in the United States. The worldwide market for antacids is estimated to be in excess of $10 billion every year. That's a lot of heartburn and indigestion. Most of us figure the acid reflux is about having too much acid, but you may be surprised to learn that it's more than that. It's actually about having too much acid in the wrong place because we have too little of it in the right place. Let's take a step back to understand this clearly. Think of the digestive tract as a long tube that begins with your mouth and ends all the way below at the anus. Different parts of this tube are meant to tolerate different levels of acidity. The part which is built to tolerate the most acid is the stomach. It's here that we break down the foods we eat to digest them. However, when the same acid sloshes back up through our throat and food pipe, where it does not belong, that's when we feel the heartburn and the acid reflux. But why does this happen? Imagine that there's insufficient acid in the stomach. Food passes undigested, it goes beyond the stomach, into the gut, where it sits and it rots. Slowly, it is digested by the bacteria there and the bacteria produce gas. This gas begins to put reverse pressure or upward pressure on the stomach, causing the acidic contents of the stomach to slosh back up the throat and voila, you have acid reflux. That's how having poor acid production in the stomach through a series of connections finally leads all the way back to acid reflux. Now we just need to understand two more critical points. Point number one, why don't we produce enough stomach acid? Stress interferes with acid production and we all know how much of it we experience every single day, right? Antibiotics do this too, since they kill off good bacteria which would have otherwise helped with the digestion. Eating meals without chewing properly, missing meals and eating too many processed foods and sugars, all of these just make the problem worse. Number two, when you feel acid reflux and the next time you take an antacid, like a Nexium or a Tums or a Digene, it shuts down the acid in the stomach. What's the result? You get temporary relief from the acid reflux, but guess what else is happening down below? Well, you guessed it right. Even lesser acid in the stomach means even more rotting food below, which means even more gas that's going to be pushed back tomorrow. And again, you have even more acid reflux. And that's just the immediate adverse effect of using antacids. People don't realize how acid reflux can go on to cause very serious chronic diseases. Poor stomach acid also equals poor digestion, which leads to poor absorption of nutrition from your food, which really weakens you from the inside. It compromises your health in a thousand different ways. So what should you do? First, try to reduce the number of things that hamper acid production, especially eating processed foods that feed the wrong gas-producing bacteria in your gut. Switch off that TV during the meal. The gripping violent TV drama or the car chase scene shuts off your acid production without you knowing it because the body goes into a state of fright or flight. Next, chew every mouthful thoroughly before you swallow it. There's fantastic research on all the health benefits that you can get by just chewing your food properly. So go ahead. Now that you understand stomach acid is your friend and you know how you can nurture it, Think twice before reaching for that antacid. If you do need digestive support, there are natural dietary supplements like ginger, mastic gum and so on that can help you manage acid reflux. We've got an entire list of it on sepalika.com. Go ahead, use the resources, empower yourself, wish you vibrant health and well-being.